Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing our predictions for UFC 132, Favor versus Cruz. Uh, let's first start off with Dennis Seaver versus Matt Winman. Winman. Um, you know, I would say Seaver tried to get, got cut from the UFC uh, a while ago when I think he, uh, when he lost his fight to Gallard, I believe. Also, to you know, but but he's been on a big winning streak. Um, his last fight, he ended up um, beating George Stoparopoulos, and um, in a in a good decision that Seaver actually won. I mean, he it wasn't like a fluke decision. He, he actually just brought it to to Stoparopoulos. Then we have, um, and he's on a great winning streak. Then we have uh, Mad Women, who I think is on. Uh, a three fight winning streak um, but I just kind of think that Den Dennis will, will his striking ability will be too much for Seaver I mean for for Winman um, and, and that he'll just basically engulf Winman um, just based on his striking ability so I have um, Seaver winning by I'll say TKO in the second round second round guys we get a little bit closer. Okay, so then we have um, Carlos Condowin versus Dong, uh, Dong Hong Kim. This is going to be an exciting fight because both of these guys are exciting. Um, Carlos Condowin, um, fight of the night, um, knockout of the night. His last fight with Dan Hardy was great. Um, came out of the blue, just caught Dan Hardy strand, you know, straight out. Then we have um, uh, Dong Hung Kim for for Conduit. It's you know his style is great. I mean he's just all over the place. But I think Kim um, is perfect for his style, um, where he will basically kind of hunker him down and you know and pretty much use his jujitsu to pretty well wrap himself around him and, and keep him at bay on the ground and. And, and, and possibly pull out a great submission. Possibly pull a great submission. But I think more realistically what's going to happen is it's going to go into a decision. And Kim is going to get a unanimous decision by pretty much out grappling um, a conduit. You know, it doesn't make an exciting fight. But I just believe that's what's going to happen. Total ground control by Kim. Then we have um, Tito Ortiz versus Ryan Bader, which this is really a joke match. It should be at least. Um, everyone knows Tito Ortiz hasn't won a fight since Ken Shamrock. Was that 2006, I believe? Um, you know, even though Ryan Bader has lost to um, uh, Johnny Bones Jones his last fight, um, that's a high quality opponent. High. You know, a high quality guy um, in the light light heavyweight division um, beating another high quality um, light heavyweight guy in that division. Well, there's no way Tito should fi be fighting those guys of that caliber. He should be at the lower levels, way way lower levels. And everyone knows, like like you've been reading the reports, that if he loses his match, if Tito loses his match, then he's going to be be forced to retire. From the UFC or go elsewhere to fight, uh, which I'm pretty sure some other smaller promotion will take him on just based on his name. But um, the UFC won't won't even deal with him anymore if he loses the match, as they shouldn't, because they're really only keeping the guy around based on I, I'm pretty sure it's just his name, you know, and bringing more people to to watch the fight. But this fight is going to be uh, is is going to be a, a straight. Demolished by Kim, Ryan Bader is going to go in there and take him down and ground and pound him. I mean, that's just really what I see. And, and, the, and the irony of that is that is that's what Tito is known for. Back in the day in his prime, he used to take guys down and ground and pound them. And I feel that's what's going to happen to him. Um, I think he's going to get taken down and ground and pound. You know, at the very least, he can hope just to be out wrestled. And just be wrestled all day and losing unanimous decisions, so he can go about saying that you know he hasn't been knocked out and he's not getting knocked out and he can fight you know another day. But either way, 
Tito loses his match, and I say he's going to lose it by ground and pound in the third round. Ground and pound, third round, he's going to get TKO'd. So um, let's go on to the next one. We have uh, Wanderlei versus Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben. Um, everybody, Wanderlei Silva, sorry for guys who don't know. Um, you know, my thing with this match is you have Wanderlei who hasn't been in the, in, I think he got ring rust. He hasn't been fighting for, has it been like a year, 16, uh, 16 months or something like that? But he hasn't been fight. he hasn't had a fight in a while. And ring rust to me is a big thing. It's a really, it's true, it's a big, big, big item as far as when you're trying to um, jump back into a fight. It's going to take hold of you like no other. And, you know, you have ring rust and then, of course, you know, I think his last fight that he had was against uh, Michael Bisbee. And he did beat Michael Bisbee, which was great. Uh, but he, um, you know, before that he had a bunch of losses. I don't know what type of streak it was, but he had a bunch of losses before that, before he had that win with Michael Bisbee. So it's just kind of showing you that he's, he's nowhere near the fighter he was in his pride days. Not even close, you know, but he still has that crazy shooter box, you know, fighting style, which can catch anybody off guard. And Chris Lieben is the perfect person for his style. Um, and he does it better than Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben is a brawler. He goes out there and, you know, tries to put on the show for the fans and all this other stuff, which is good and all. Um, he'll take shots to get a shot. You know, he'll do all that stuff. But <clears throat> it's just that even though Wanderlei is not even being close to the fighter he was in his pride days, he's still a better fighter than Chris Lieben. In Chris Lieben's, you know, I don't know if this is Chris Lieben's prime, but at this particular time, he's just not better than Wanderlei. But the bad, like I was trying to say, my point is trying to get that even though Wanderlei is, is not the same guy that he used to be and all of a sudden so he's out of his prime, he, you're adding ring rust to that equation also. And you kind of don't know, is the ring rust going to really, you know, hold, hold Wanderlei down to not do what he used to do? Is it going to degrade him even more? Um, and with this, I'm going to say, yes, it's not, he's not going to be the same Wanderlei that you, you know, that you, that we all know and love, even, even in the UFC days. But... He's still a better fighter with the ring rust and, you know, being out of his prime than Chris Lieben. So I'm going to say uh, Wanderlei is going to win by unanimous decision, by unanimous decision um, against Chris Lieben. You know, everybody's thinking this is going to be a, somebody's going to get knocked out. But I think it's going to be, a, you know, swinging for the fences, holding against the cage, dirty boxing type thing. No one's going to really go to the ground. And it's just going to end up, you know, not being one of those knockout occasions because everyone's hoping that it's going to be a knockout. And normally those are the ones that don't come out to be a knockout. They always become a decision. It's always becomes a letdown. So I think realistically, like I said, a decision. Okay. Um, so then we have the main event, which is Cruz versus Faber. Dominic Cruz versus Uriah, Uriah Faber. Um, you know... These guys have met before. Cruz, you know, fought Faber back in WEC, and Cruz. I mean, um, Cruz got choked out in I think the first 98 seconds of the match by a guillotine choke. And I watched the, the countdown and whatnot, and the animosity between these two guys. You know, not liking each other. You know, Cruz wanted what Faber wants. Faber wanted what Cruz wants. You know, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I mean, Cruz has gotten a lot better from what he used to be back in the WEC days, and so has Faber. He's gotten better. I mean, he was good, great then, and he's he's good now. You know, um, I, I was a little worried about him jumping into the bantamweight, you know, division, and um, in that bantamweight decision, and and really just cutting down and and, and getting you know getting you know gas from that that cut that you have to take. Uh, but 
it ended up turn. He really ended up turning around when I saw him uh, do his debut in the UFC, and he 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 turned me over. He he really he really um, showed that he can really hang in that in that division, even with the cuts and everything, and and not get gas. I mean, he was a little gas, but not not as gas as I thought he was going to be. Um, so, you know, it's it's a it's really a toss up in, in in this match. These guys. Uh, you know, Faber is the stronger striker, better submission. Um, Cruz, I would say, is the faster of the two, um, faster of the two, um, but doesn't hit as hard. Um, and his submission, is, I haven't seen it in a long, in about three or four matches. So I don't know. I don't think his submission is up. You know, is is at the top level. I think when it comes to submission wise, I would give it to Faber based upon his submissions are he may not know as many submissions and then but his submissions the submissions that he do that he does are stronger. Um, and he when he when he gets it on you he gets it on you. Um, so I would give the submissions to Faber and um, and the speed the the submission and the speed to um, to Cruz. So with that being said, um, I just have to go with Faber. Excuse me, sorry. I have to go with Faber to win this fight only because, um, I because he's he's done it before. Even though I know these guys have grown since they first met, but Faber has been the one consistently showing me of the grow him growing and growing and growing. He's the bigger guy in this match. Um, He's went from one division coming to another division. He's he he's almost has the same speed as Cruz. Almost, he's stronger than Cruz and has a better submission game than Cruz. And I just feel like he the 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 cards are stacked in in Faber's in Faber's side. It's just um, Cruz can win if he does maybe a pick. You know, as far as using his boxing and using his speed to. You know, outbox crews, and you know, stay on the outsides, and you know, and using angles and whatnot. But I just feel like he's going to get caught up in in Faber grabbing him and taking him to the ground, double leg, single leg. You know, get against the cage and throw him to the ground. And, and I think that's what Faber is going to do because he wants to, you know, get rid of that speed and uh, di uh, um, disadvantage that he has. So I'm going to go with Faber winning. By unanimous decision, um, by unanimous decision. So let me know what you guys think. Um, as normal, please rate, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys for the review of UFC 132. Thanks.